Good morning. Welcome to St. John Lutheran Church. We thank you for your presence. We thank you online for your presence, and uh, we are grateful uh, to see what the Lord has in store for us today. And so uh, with that, we are, uh, uh, we are humbled by the, the fact that our Lord loves us and cares for us so much uh, that he would even meet us in a place uh, like this where we are worshiping him and giving him thanks and praise. And so let's do just that. Let us rise and begin our worship with the invocation and the confession and absolution. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Together, Almighty God, maker of all things and judge of all people, we poor sinners confess to you that we have turned away from you. We have not done the good you desire, but have done the evil you forbid. We repent of all our sins of thought, word, and deed, and pray for your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Turn our hearts away from sin and its temptation and grant us by the Holy Spirit to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. In the holy name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our opening song, Amazing Love.
Father, amazing love is what you bring. Amazing love that overcomes all of our regret, all of our guilt, all of our self-condemnation. We love the fact that you, being the God who came to this earth, overcame all of that because of that amazing love. And so we commend to you this time of worship where we just reflect on that love, what it means to us, and how we apply it to our lives. And so we graciously give you this time and ask you to use it to mold our hearts and make us into the people you desire us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Congregation may be seated for the reading of God's Word. The Old Testament reading for today comes from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Our epistle reading comes from 1 John chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to God. We rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh and eighth chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. They went each to his own house, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now, in the law, of, in the law Moses' command us, commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? 
This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on the screen. Together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and the children are asked to come forward for a message. Good morning, everyone. So, today we are going to talk about forgiveness, which is so cool and so amazing. I am so happy that I've been forgiven. But when we talk about forgiveness, we have to talk about the wrong things that we do. So there's some stuff in our lives that we do that's wrong, and that's called sin. Can you think of anything that you do wrong? Sometimes people lie. You know what? Usually we sit down, but today we're going to stand up, and we are going to walk in the wrong direction when we do something wrong. So sometimes people lie. Big step in the wrong direction. Kids at home, stand up and step with us. What else do we do that's wrong? We disobey. we disobey. Big step in the wrong direction. But sometimes we do things that are right. What's something that we do that's right sometimes? We, we listen to God's word. So we'll take a small step in the right direction, but that's about as far as we can go all by ourselves. So when we do things that are wrong, we're taking a big step in the wrong direction. And we do things that are right, and we take a little step in the right direction. But God takes our wrong things, and he covers them with his righteousness. And righteousness, when we're given that, is just a big word, for we are forgiven. We're covered. So Jesus takes us all the way back to the right place. So here we are in the right place. And now that we're here with Jesus, we can do right things. So what's some right things that we can do? We can help our parents. And with the help of Jesus, when we help our parents, we take a big step in the right direction. And maybe, since we've been forgiven, and we have God's forgiveness, we can forgive others. Can we forgive others? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big step in the right direction. You know what? I'm so excited for you guys and all the big steps that you guys will be taking this week. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your forgiveness. I thank you for everything you've given us and all the blessings that we have because of you. I pray that you help us make big steps in the right direction with you this week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, let's go sit down. Thank you. 
We continue our worship with At the Cross and Sweetly Broken.
Father, that is the prayer that we commend to you today, broken but yet surrendered to the fact that you are God over our lives and that all the stuff that we bring to you, that you, the God of all creation, the Redeemer, the, the giver of life, you free us from. And we thank you and we praise you. 
we give you this time that we have together and ask your blessing to be upon it that you, the God, who is that one who has given us so much, would do so in this moment. And so we commend this time to you and ask you to use it, ask you to bless it, and ask you to make it fruitful for us as we walk out those doors today. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. In 2018, the car fire burned over 230,000 acres of land in Northern California. It's on record as being the 12th largest wildfire in modern California history. The wildfire cost over $1.6 billion in damages, including $1.5 billion in insured losses. The fire, which destroyed multiple towns around Whiskeytown Lake, was first reported on July 23, 2018, at the intersection of Highway 299 and Carr Powerhouse Road, hence the name. The accidental cause of the fire was a vehicle towing a dual axle travel trailer. One of the tires on the trailer blew out and the steel rim started to scrape along the pavement generating sparks that ignited the dry vegetation along the edge of the highway. Within minutes, wind caused the fire to spread quickly. And within three days, the fire had consumed 29,000 acres and was only 10% contained. It finally, finally was brought under control August 30th, 2018, almost a month later. But not before more than 1,000 homes were destroyed and 11 people, including three firefighters, had died. It was learned that the wife of the couple whose trailer caused the fire, fire was completely distraught and brokenhearted over what had happened because she was the one who insisted that her husband bring the trailer on the short trip that they were to take. When survivors of the fire heard how the couple had been overcome with grief, and particularly this woman, they formed a Facebook page to show grace and kindness for the shame and despair that this couple obviously was being overrun and overwhelmed by. One woman wrote this, As someone that lost their home to this fire, I need you to know my family nor any of the other families that lost their homes blame you for what happened. Accidents happen. I really hope these kind messages ease your burden. We will get through this together. Now, I couldn't find any additional information about the couple and how they processed all these kind words, but can you imagine hearing those words in the midst of the condemnation, the guilt, the regret they must have felt. But it got me thinking about what happens inside of us when guilt, regret, and self-condemnation is left unattended, is left to have its way in us. Because a condemning, regret-filled heart is a powerful thing. The fear that we have done something unredeemable or shameful can cannibalize the human soul. It can eat us from the inside out and keep us trapped in guilt. Regret over the things we wish we could do 
is an unrelenting force that I would imagine we have all faced at one point in our lives. Psychologists insist that regret will forge our identities based on the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. And if those stories are negative in nature and remain unresolved or dealt with in an appropriate way, they will tend to drive our values we place upon ourselves. But they will also cause little bits and pieces to seep out of us as to how we see and treat others. You know, I can't imagine what that couple must have felt about themselves as they watched those fires grow, and especially the horror they felt when people started to lose everything, including their lives. I mean, can you imagine the story they were writing about themselves? I mean, I can't possibly know how they felt, but I can imagine how they felt because it, it, if it would have been me, it wouldn't have been good. Especially if I would have been the one to insist on taking the trailer that day. The regret of, in, of that insistence would have burned a hole in my soul and the what-ifs would have overwhelmed me beyond degree. You see, the yearning for do-overs grips us all. We all wish we could erase a painful situation we may have caused or retract words said or undo a deed done or left undone. But the truth is, we can't. We can't undo those things. However, the story we end up concocting and creating about ourselves can be changed. I'm fascinated by this account that we have in our gospel lesson for today. Now, Jesus was in the temple one early morning teaching the people that were there, and it appears that it was a decent crowd. I mean, the text says that all the people came to him. Now, we don't know what that number was, but we can assume that it was a good number. And so in the midst of his teaching, these scribes and these Pharisees bring a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. Caught in the act of adultery. Now, another assumption that we can make is that being that she was caught in the act, it's a good guess that as she stood there in front of everyone, she wasn't really appropriately dressed for the temple. Probably what happened is that in the, in the midst of them dragging her out of bed, she might have found something to drape over herself to cover the parts of her body that needed covering, but perhaps not. And so to insert the knife of humility deeper into her soul, they take her to the temple of God. <laughs> and they march her in front of all these people, even Jesus, and the text says that they did this so that they could trap him. So that they could, they could find something against him in which they could charge him with. What do you say, Jesus? This woman was caught in the act of breaking a law that commands us to stone her. What do you say? Now, another assumption that we can make is that probably all those scribes and Pharisees each carried a rock, a stone, to carry out the sentence that the law 
demanded. What do you say, Jesus? And so he bends down and starts writing something on the ground, but their insistence to that question says in the text that they just continue to ask him, what do you say? What do you say, Jesus? And finally, he stands up and he answers. Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. He then bends back down, continues writing on the ground. What? We have no idea. But it's almost like you can just feel the dramatic pause in this moment. One by one, beginning with the older scribes and Pharisees because they had been around the block enough to know what Jesus was referring to. And one by one, they drop their rocks of condemnation. I mean, you can just hear in the words, thud, 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 until no one was left to carry out the sentence that the law concerning this woman's sin demanded. Now, in thinking about this woman, do you think that as she stood there with all those eyes gazing at her, that she was regretting the decision that she had made, wanting desperately to have an redo of the decisions that she made the night previous? Do you think that if there was a hole deep enough for her to hide herself in from all those eyes staring at her, that she would have crawled in it immediately? Do you think that her heart was internally crying out in anguish and guilt? I mean, I can only imagine the story that she was mentally writing about herself in that moment. You see, regret is a cruel and heartless monster. A heart of condemnation kills anything positive that we might even remotely think about ourselves because it hangs on us, repeats its conviction over and over and over again, writing an unpleasant story because of the regret and condemnation we hold against ourselves. And we will do this all the time. But the good news for us is that we have Jesus who assures us that the story we write about ourselves never has to be one of constant condemnation. Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, Lord. Not one then neither do I, who actually am the one who could throw a rock at you and sentence you to death. But I don't. Because there's a better, fuller story I want you to write about yourself. So go and don't do what brought you here anymore because you're better than that. Your story can be so much more freeing than that. And I will show you in a couple of weeks how much freeing that can be. Because I will show you the level of forgiveness that you actually have. <laughs> you know, we've been implying throughout this series that repentance 
is, in a sense, a transfer of ownership, of our conscience, of our being. Because we are fully depraved to the core. And because we are, we need his intervention. And because of the truth of our depravity, our story of ourselves would be nothing more than describing things like failure, unworthiness, hopelessness. But the interesting thing about repentance is that in the Greek, the word used is metanoia. Meta means after, but actually applies in its meaning to change or to turn. Noia means to perceive. So metanoia or repentance is to change or turn our perception. You see, when we are confronted by our conscience and our spirit living within us and are given the opportunity to reflect on what we have done, said, or thought that is contrary to his will and desire, we will instinctively feel regret because we are aware of our failure. And if left, if left there in that state, the story that we would write for ourselves would be the same. One of failure. But repentance changes that perception about ourselves because it invites the one who has the power to definitely condemn us to instead free us and declare us free from that which would condemn us. It's a beautiful thing. Where are they? Has no one condemned you? <laughs> Neither do I. The Apostle John describes what we can do in the midst of our self-condemnation tirades. <laughs> Here's what he says, verse 1. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, the stand-in for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You see, when we go to our Lord with our regrets and condemning messy stories and no freedom within them, something changes in our perception. John, later in chapter 3, goes on and says this. He says, I love this, whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. You see, that, my friends, is really good news for us. When we engage in repentance or metanoia, we are inviting him into our story. And when we do, he promises that he will help rewrite the narrative that has falsely accused ourselves, that we have done to ourselves. And you see, when that happens, we, like what happened to that woman, are condemnation free. Regret diminishes because a story of forgiveness is only he can bring emerges within us and becomes the freeing mechanism that overcomes regret and overcomes self-condemnation. 
You know, I actually can imagine what that couple must have felt like when they heard those people, when they, when they heard that those people who lost everything in the fire caused by their trailer felt. When they said to her, it's okay, we'll get through this together. I can actually know what they felt like because I feel the same thing. When I invite the Lord to change my perspective from a story of condemnation to a story of forgiveness, we are free, my friends, because of Jesus. Whatever our regrets are over things we wish we could undo, our Lord says to us, He looks us in the eyes and He says to us, where are they? Has anyone condemned you besides yourself? And neither do I. You're free. He declares us free. What a wonderful thing. And that, my friends, is what true repentance does for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We respond to the word with the sharing of our tithes and offering. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you and praise you for the great comfort that you give to us today. That despite all the regret and the self-condemnation that we will put ourselves through, you declare us, because of what you did on the cross, free. Free. And so we thank you, Lord, and we take a moment to just sit in that thanks and give back to you a portion of what you have given us the blessings are numerous but particularly in the material sense we just give back to you a portion of what you have given us because you have blessed us because you love us so much and so we ask that you use these gifts to help others see that great blessing being free in you. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Some announcements that uh, we want to make known to you from the pink announcement sheets. Uh, at the very front of your 
uh, of, the, of, the, of the noteworthy news. Uh, our baskets of promise continue. And so uh, we are uh, getting very, very close to reaching our goals. So uh, continue to bring uh, in those items that we're asking for. And uh, we'll continue to give you an update as to uh, where we are in the process. But the, the goal is 100. If we go past that, that's even better. And so uh, uh, that's, uh, we just want to keep that in front of you in terms of your attention. Uh, also, on the, uh, on the uh, flip side, we have a lot of things going on with our uh, youth. There is an uh, 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 activity today. Uh, that we're asking our youth to participate in. There's something coming up on April 3rd, a paintball uh, that they can participate in. And then on uh, Easter Sunday, uh, we're having a potluck Easter brunch as well as an egg hunt, uh, Easter egg hunt. And so uh, the congregation is asked to bring a dish for that potluck. And there's a sign-up sheet, I think, in the back uh, to do that. Uh, but also, um, we're going to, uh, for ages nursery to sixth grade, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt in between services on the uh, 17th. So uh, please uh, note that and uh, be in the fellowship hall to participate in food and fun. Um, we also are continuing on with our uh, uh, National Youth Gathering Envelope Challenge. And so there are some envelopes still back there. Uh, there's a couple of weeks left, and so we bring that to your attention. Uh, we also uh, want to promote our walk that is happening on April the 4th through the 10th. And so there's these purple cards that uh, we want to bring to your attention, and they are in the back, and uh, you can uh, take the, a bunch of those cards and pass them out to the people uh, who you know or are in your circles of influence uh, that you might think would benefit this. Uh, it is April 4th through, the, through April 10th, and the, the times are there listed on this brochure, and so uh, we draw that to your attention. And then uh, uh, we want to also on the back page uh, uh, bring to your attention our Compassion Center Donation Sunday, which is going to be April the 10th, and so uh, we are looking for those items that are needed uh, that they that are listed there and so if you have something that uh, you can bring on that tent you will be meeting at door number five in between services and so uh, please note that also uh, we need uh, a volunteer uh, and there is a current need for the volunteer on Tuesday mornings and so uh, to sort and tag close and uh, Kathy Mokaris or Rob Hunter uh, you can see and uh, contact them and let them know that you're interested and they'll let you know what all needs to be done. And so then finally, uh, we have in, I think in your bulletins, this uh, Easter lily form. It's a Easter lily and daffodil form. And so uh, please note that and uh, uh, that, that uh, deadline is April 3rd. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So that's all the announcements I have. Let us rise for prayer. Prayers, uh, uh, prayer requests have come in this week for uh, Marie Grundler and uh, healing on her leg uh, that has a stress fracture. And so she's uh, going uh, uh, to be, have to be at home for the next six weeks. And so we continue to lift her up. Uh, we pray for uh, David Landis, who is in the hospital with uh, health issues. Uh, for Tony uh, uh, Behrens, uh, who is uh, friends of members here, who is having health concerns. Uh, for Susan Kurtz and family, uh, one of our new members, uh, the loss of her mom, uh, Edwina Keach, and so uh, we lift her up. Uh, we pray for uh, Ted Grothy Sr., who is, uh, uh, he, that he would have healing on his foot after surgery on that foot. Uh, for the blessing of uh, uh, Luca Mackley, um, was born Wednesday, 316, awesome, uh, to Jenna and Dakota, and uh, we are grateful for that. And then uh, uh, just a, 
uh, a quick reminder of a birthday that's coming up um, on Tuesday. Uh, we have someone who is here attending that will have a birthday on Tuesday. And uh, I'm not going to say how old she's going to be because that would be the death of me. Uh, but uh, it's Miss Beth Graybill. And so uh, we just, uh, you know, praise God for your birthday. And so let's just embarrass her just a little and sing happy birthday real quick. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Beth. Happy birthday to you. All right, you can thank whoever wrote that note later. So let us pray. Father, we do thank you and praise you for the wonderful gift of who you are and what you offer us in our lives. We thank you for this idea that when we repent, we receive something very precious from you. Freedom. Freedom from those things that regret traps us with. Freedom from those things that we, that we self-condemnation, condemn, you know, condemn ourselves to. And so that freedom, Lord, is your gift to us because it is a freedom that we do not stand condemned in front of you. The rocks drop because you, the God of all creation, declares us free. And so we thank you, we praise you for that wonderful, wonderful gift. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, into your hands we commend to you those whom we've prayed for, who we listed before you, but we also know that there are others on our hearts and minds that we now silently lift before you as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord. We, we do commend to you all that is happening in our world right now, particularly we lift up to you, Ukraine and all that is going on there. Father, we do not understand any of this, but we know that you are in control, that there's not one thought, there's not one action that is, that is unavailable to you. And so help us in the midst of trying to figure this whole thing out to understand that you are the God that is in control and let us rest in that fact that you the God who is in control who loves us and went to a cross for us that you care for these people in Ukraine that you desire for them to come to you for the for them to repent of their sin and turn to you and have a revival of sort towards you knowing that you are the rock and you are the freedom that they need in their lives. And so no matter how difficult it is for them, let them all know that you are the God who is there with them through all of this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend it all to you, knowing and trusting that you are the God who frees us. And that's enough. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink it all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, 
you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. We prepare our hearts for God's gift of grace. You may be seated. the body of your Lord given for you, the blood of your Lord shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. For those who are taking communion at home with us and those who are taking communion here at their seats, uh, we take your all-in-one communion cup and expose the wafer. This is the body of your Lord given for you. Likewise, do the same with the grape juice or the wine. This is the, body, this is the blood of your Lord shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Go now in the peace of his forgiveness. Amen. The rest may come forward. Say 
now may this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Depart in his peace. Amen. Please rise. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. All right. Uh, as Pastor said a few times in the message, with this forgiveness, we are free. Um, and our last song is called I Am Free, as many of you know. Um, and the chorus says, I am free to run. I am free to dance. I am free to live for you. I am free. So I would encourage you to run and dance and go willy-nilly. The kids can go crazy. This is your time to just praise the Lord with your body and spirit.
guess Lutheran's got to work on that some more, but that was good. That was good. The worship has ended. The service now begins as we enter the mission field, relying, relating, and responding. Let us do whatever it takes for the sake of God's kingdom. Thanks be to God.